Hello, we're Emmy and Andy, and we've been in a relationship for about five and a half years. We're a couple that likes to do BDSM, a little bit of kink, and we sleep with and date women together, usually in threesomes. What we're gonna talk about here today is, I guess, two different categories of how you can explore BDSM and kink. And so on the one hand, there's like in the bedroom only. So we call that kind of like casual. And in this podcast, we're kind of gonna call that like casual BDSM. So you would just explore that in bed and then outside the bedroom, it's just a normal relationship. That's kind of most of what we do. But then the second type is sort of like outside the bedroom as well. And so that can take the form of like a 24 seven power exchange. So one of you might always be the dominant mm -hmm. and the other one is always the submissive, or it might just be like you do it outside the bedroom sometimes. So again, those two categories in the bedroom only kink and BDSM and then sometimes or all the time outside of the bedroom. So with that, we will say this is BDSM and kink is very much like an open, big playground, mm -hmm. and there are no correct ways of doing this. You can kind of do whatever you want to do. So see it as a big, different, a, a big, beautiful, open world. Try some different things, see what you like and see what your partner's like. Yeah, and we're going to speak a little bit about what we like, about what mm -hmm. we do and the pros and cons of the other dynamics mm -hmm. and hopefully help you decide what you might be into. Yeah. And really, like we said, that's just a process of trying different things and seeing what you and your partner's like. Let's start with a very casual one, pun intended, casual or scene based dom sub or kink relationship. So mm -hmm. we're talking about casual and this is probably the easiest way of getting started with this stuff. And it's predominantly what we like to do. Yeah, we're obviously very serious with each other. We've been together for five and a half years. We mm. love each other very much. We have matching tattoos. We do. But a lot of what we do with other women is casual. And so we might see them for a long time. You know, we've got a girl that we're seeing right now. We've been seeing her for about 10 months. And we like her very much. She likes us very much. But what we're talking about here is the actual dynamic of the sex. And I guess what we're talking about or the dynamic of the kink is like, you know, you, you can kind of keep kink and BDSM as either sort of a casual part of a relationship where it's just something that you bring out when you feel like it, or you can go a lot more all in with it and treat it like it's like a 24 seven power dynamic. So like you're always in these roles of, you know, one person might be a bit more dominant, the other person might be a bit more submissive. Mm -hmm. And what we like to play with is just keeping it casual. Like we don't generally speaking, do it outside the bedroom. We might a little bit, but not yeah. a lot. Yeah. There's no defined roles that are part of our personality. We, we change yeah. it up. We, we play it by ear. And for the most part, like we, we present as a pretty normal couple. Yeah. Yeah. We had someone sign up. We had a, a lady sign up for my coaching program. And she said, part of the reason I signed up is because you two just seem pretty normal and you were just talking about BDSM and kink as if it was just like a fun thing that you do. You can definitely see BDSM and, and kink and sex in general, I guess. It's just this like fun little thing that you guys do as part of the overall relationship. And so that's what we mean when we say like casual or sort of like a scene based dom sub relationship. What we mean there is like you play out a little scene. You go, hey, today, let's be a little bit kinky. Let's try some dom sub shit. Let's try some role play. And I feel like we can kind of mention that as the first reason why we might enjoy that is because it's not so serious. It's not a big deal. And we've said this quite a few times before, but I think there can be levels of gatekeeping with the BDSM community. Like and it can be a little bit intimidating. To yeah. To. And you're not doing it right. And there are all of these rules. Whereas the way that we like to take it, it is, it is just casual. It's basically hmm. a couple or sometimes we introduce a third and we're just playing and exploring depths of pleasure through kink, mm. but it's not a defining thing or a very serious thing that we have to abide by. Yeah. It's kind of like a hat that we put on. Yeah. Something that we play with. And so that's what we mean when we say like a casual dom sub or a casual kink relationship. It's like, it's like you said, it's like something that you try. So I would say our relationship is like a normal relationship. Some people might look at it and go, wow, that's, that's not a normal relationship. You guys sleep with women together. You have threesomes, you know, you're into this crazy kink and BDSM lifestyle, but it doesn't really feel crazy for us. It's just a normal relationship. We've had so many friends, you know, you know who I'm talking about. I won't say his name, but recently we said to someone, oh, by the way, we're in an open relationship. And he was like, what? Mm. Like, tell me, okay, I have a thousand questions. Like, and this is someone that's known both of us for years. And the topic just never came up. We tell people if they ever ask, it's just, we're not going to like 
blurt that out to everyone. We'll, we'll say it if it's relevant, and it was in this conversation. And I think because we don't see it as a big deal, and it's not a defining characteristic of who we mm-hmm. are, that's part of the reason why it doesn't often come up, and it doesn't really feel relevant in most conversations. Yeah, yeah. It's because it's, you, you're not necessarily going out of your way to tell people, like, oh, by the way, I'm in a monogamous heterosexual world. Like, you don't... I'm not just going to blurt that out. Yeah. Just like I wouldn't <laughs> tell everyone that I play tennis or that I like rock climbing. It's like, if it comes up, I'll say it. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like for us a fun hobby, and it brings us a lot of joy, a lot of connectedness, um, a lot of experimentation, a lot of intimacy. And that's why we do it. It's to explore sex in a deeper way. Yeah. And explore like the levels of intimacy and connection. And then sometimes we do just have what people would call like vanilla sex, Normal like sex, standard yeah. sex, and that's fun too. And we like exploring aspects of that. It's just another thing that's in our toolkit of things that we can pull out during sex to keep it fun. And I think that's a good way of phrasing it, toolkit or repertoire or, you know, where we are two people that like to experiment a lot. We're two people that like to seek out novelty outside of the bedroom. I'm just talking about in general. We like to try new things. We're very social people. We like to meet new people. We like to try different hobbies. And you have like 50 different hobbies that you've done. I have like 50 different hobbies that I've done. And so we see BDSM and kink as just like a fun way to explore other things in the bedroom. If you're listening to this and that style of exploring BDSM and kink really appeals to you and you go, wow, so I can just have like a normal relationship or, you know, whether that's casual, whether that's serious, whether that's monogamous, whether that's open, doesn't matter, but I can just have like a normal relationship and just try some blindfolds once in a while. Yeah. Great. I call that like BDSM for the vanilla guy. Yeah. Or, or vanilla girl. And it's as you've a- already said, it's the easiest way to one of the easiest ways you can just give it a shot without committing to everything. Like saying like, we're going to get into the BDSM lifestyle and have this, like be part of the community and yeah. like take on roles. Like I'm going to be a dom and that is my type. Like there's none of that pressure. Yeah. And obviously if you want, and we're going to talk about this in a second, we're going to talk about more like all in or committed styles of BDSM and kink where you do enter the lifestyle. You do call yourself like a dom. You do present as I am a dom or I am a submissive. And some people love that shit and like, hell yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. So, but the reason that we started with this is because like we said, this is what we enjoy. We like to just have it as a fun little thing that we do and there's no pressure and we can do whatever we want. And we present that to all of the women that we date. We obviously tell them right from the very beginning, look, we are, um, a kink couple, I guess you could, we like kink and we're obviously in a relationship. And if you date us, you will obviously be dating both of us. And, you know, we can hang out one-on-one if we want to, but like we are a couple, like bear that in mind. So we make that obvious and we say that, but we've had quite a few women that say like, oh, you know, I really want to do that, but I'm kind of nervous to get into BDSM and I, I don't know how to be a good submissive or I don't know how to do all this stuff. And we go, no, it's fine. We just, we'll try some things and see what you like. And I think we mentioned this example a lot, probably because it's the most prolific example of BDSM in pop culture, but Fifty Shades of Grey maybe set those unrealistic expectations where like, you know, there's this woman who's never tried anything. She doesn't, she's, I don't think she's even had sex. She's like a virgin. Um, and then yeah. she gets into it and she's signing a contract and it's basically like she's signing her life away to it's this very man. Full on, hey, and it's like, you're going nowhere. to be like yeah. basically my slave and here's all these rules that you always have to abide. But like, that's like, it's just jumping in to like almost into like a whole nother planet, like in yeah. a way of operating. Whereas... We're just people that like to have, like, fun, kinky sex. Yeah, and again, if you want to do what she did, like, if you do want to go all in, we will talk about that in a second in this video, you know, great, go at it. But I think most people, when they start something new, anything in general, want to just dip their toe in the water and take a baby step. Like, there are very few people that go, oh, I've never tried rock climbing before. Let me try the hardest climb ever without ropes, you know, called free climbing. Let me just go up to Mount Everest and climb that, like, There's very few, you don't really rock climb Mount Everest. I mean, I guess you do actually, but like there's very few people that just go a hundred percent all in. I've never really jogged before. Let me enter a marathon. It's like, (laughs) I think most people like to take baby steps and then build up to that thing. And again, there's nothing wrong with going all in, but I think this is a nice, this is the advice that I give when someone says they want to try BDSM or they want to try being a little bit more kinky in the bedroom, whether that's with a partner or with new people or whatever. Mm-hmm. I say, just try a few little bits and pieces. Try a blindfold, you know, try a, try a bit of ropes, try just calling your partner something dirty, mm-hmm. try calling them, sir, try calling them master, try calling them, you know, whatever you want to say. You just kind of baby step this stuff and see what you enjoy. 
like you said, we use this as very much our exploration of sex and intimacy and kind of going deeper with each other and with other girls. Yeah. And on the idea of exploration, I think the thing that we also like is that it's not, and because we address it in a really casual way, we don't have these fixed roles or expectations of one another. Correct. Yeah. And so we can change it up. So sometimes, or a lot of the time you're more dominant, but sometimes I can be, and we can play with different role plays and Mm. dynamics. And it's not like you're the dom and I'm the sub because we take it more casually. Mm. There's no hard and fast rules. We, we change things up all the time and it keeps it fun and light for us. Yeah. And I think that's because that fits our personality types. I personally don't really like labels as much. I'm just someone that's never really resonated. So you'll never really catch me saying I'm a left winger. I'm a right winger. Like that stuff to me is just a game that I don't really feel like playing. Mm. And you probably won't hear me say things like, you know, I'm a dom or I'm this. I will say like, I'm traditionally a dom. Most of the time I am dominant, but Mm. Yeah, like you said, even in the middle of it, I can be dominant in the middle of it and then we can just switch. And so we're a lot more fluid and we do this with the women that we date and sleep with as well. We're just, there's no predefined roles. There's no like things that we must do. There's no particular kinks or fetishes or fantasies that we always play out. We kind of just like see what we feel like in the moment and talk about what we feel like in the moment and Mm -hmm. kind of just go from there. One thing that we do like to do, and maybe you could say this is my traditional role almost all of the time is I call myself like a, and it's funny that I just said I don't use labels, but I don't use most labels. I use the labels that I like. And, you know, one of the labels that I like is facilitator. Mm. And so what I mean there is I will say to other people, you know, you, the women that we might date, and I do this with my coaching clients too. I do this with all of you watching. I say like, what do you want? And then let me facilitate that for you. Let me be the safe space that you can explore that in. Let me be the person that can push you, motivate you, like guide you, encourage you, help you achieve that, whether that's goals, whether that's sex stuff, what do you actually want? And I'm down, I'm 100% down, unless it's something I don't want to do, obviously. But if I'm happy to do it, I'm a, I'm all in, I'm 100% committed to making that happen. And I think that helps. I really like that because like I said, I like to explore the depth of human experience. I like to see everything. I like to sample everything. I'm someone that goes to a buffet and like 100% gets everything there. Like a tiny little like teaspoon, like unless half a it, teaspoon. Unless it contains any of the sure, many unless it's, things unless you it's don't something, Sure, unless it's something that I don't like. There are, I can be fussy with food. Yes, but like, <laughs> like, you know, like I don't like seafood, for instance. Fine. Like ignoring that, it's like I'm going to get a little teaspoon of like every single little piece that I possibly can. Because I want to taste everything. How many times do we go, you know what I'm going to say, we go to a grocery store or a random store that we've never been to before. And I'm just there, like, especially in the drinks aisle, I get obsessed with like soft drinks and shit like that. And I'm just like, oh my God, baby, we've never tried this flavor. Like mango passion fucking attack. Wow. What a cool name. Let's try that. Lollipop surprise. Let's try that. Oh, this drink says it's rainbow flavored. What do you think rainbow flavored is? I have to buy this and I'll just buy like five drinks all at once. And it's like, well, I'm not going to drink all of them. I'm going to take a little sip and be like, oh, that was good. Here you go. Oh, that was good. Like, that's just me. I like to sample shit. So I enjoy that in the bedroom. So you can have labels if you want. And I would guess that a hell of a lot of people, a hell of a lot of you watching want some sort of label or you are magnetized towards some sort of label. You know, maybe you're a dominant, maybe you like to be this, maybe you like to be brat, maybe you like to be a good girl, whatever it is. But for those of you out there who don't know what label you are or want to be, or you're a bit more like me and maybe you where you're like, I don't need a label. I just want to try a lot of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Doing it casually and just having a normal relationship where you try some BDSM stuff in the bedroom and that can be very casual. Like, I think that can help especially because you don't have to enter into the mode of like, I'm a dom or I'm a sub. Yeah. You can literally just talk in the bedroom, say, hey, that was fun. What would you like to try now? You can just like almost break the fourth wall. You don't have to go into character. You can literally just be like, I'm Andy in the bedroom. You are Immy in the bedroom. Mm. And we just talk. And to be clear, like what we actually said at the start, we we did say casual slash scene based BDSM. And I think you can still carry. So when we say a scene, a scene is like the the energy or the the role that you step into during sex and it's it's there for that period where you're dynamic yeah where you're having sex and then it kind of ends after and i think you can still have those titles and have those defined roles when you're in a scene and then outside of that you're just acting normally or independently whether that's in a relationship or on your own and then coming into 
that energy or playing that part, so to speak. And that is still a more casual way of approaching it than what we're going to get into about like the more 24 seven yeah. style or dynamic of BDSM. And let's talk a little bit. You don't identify as a submissive. You did at the start and then you kind of like opened up a little bit and we became like more casual with this stuff. So that's another thing to say. You can change this up. Like, you know, there's no rules here. Do whatever you want and what your partners want. Like Mm. BDSM and kink are this big open world where you can just try a bunch of different stuff and see what you like. And because we're more casual and you don't like identify as I am a submissive. No, you're just like Emmy. Mm. You're just like a human being. You're like this. I think when I first came into the relationship at that point in time, I was seeking out probably something more extreme and probably something that was more like established in a relationship where I am a submissive Mm. and I'm with a dominant. And that was like most of the time that being the case. And I'd gotten that from watching a lot of porn, reading a lot of erotica. And I definitely fantasize that idea and sexually, I definitely still fantasize about it, but only in a sexual sense. Mm-hmm. But actually having then spent some time with people and being in a relationship with you, Andy, I think that probably wasn't the best thing for my self-esteem. Mm-hmm. I think because I had quite low self-worth, I didn't have very much confidence and I was seeking out someone to defer to and to take control. Mm. I think it only contributed to the feelings of not being good enough and not being an independent, capable person. And so throughout the period of our relationship, it's actually something that we've worked on is me, even though I might be more naturally inclined to be submissive or defer to you, or I guess just not make my own decisions in a lot of things. We've worked on me actually doing the opposite of that so that I can be more comfortable as a person independently and not feel dependent on you. And that's felt a lot healthier for us. And I probably wasn't getting into like BDSM dynamics for the healthier reasons at times. Mm -hmm. At the start. start, Yeah, at the start. And this is what has just worked for us and how it's naturally evolved over time. Yeah. And to be clear, to be very clear, like being submissive doesn't have to mean that lowers your self-esteem. But in your case and in the dynamic of our relationship, and this is why we say just try a bunch of different things and see what works for you and your partners in the case of our relationship yeah you were leaning so heavily into being submissive like outside of the bedroom just in terms of the relationship in particular that we did get to a point where i would say to you like i kind of want to have want you to have your own opinion i don't want you to just say yes because i asked something that isn't fun for me you know like i said i like to facilitate other people's wants and desires and all of that and if you're just saying yes to everything i want i don't know what the fuck you want How do I even know if you're enjoying this thing or you're just saying yes? Yeah. And as you just said, like there can be people in a more intense or more committed version of a BDSM type relationship where you still like, it's still very healthy and it's a beautiful thing where it's Mm. two people coming together, trusting one another, having that power exchange Mm. and having that be a fantastic experience that benefits both of them. I just think for us, that wasn't what ended up working out the best. Yeah. And as a good example of that, the woman that just signed up for coaching with us, you know, a week ago, she's in her, I'm going to guess she's in her forties and she's like, for want of a better phrase, I love this phrasing, a badass bitch, (laughs) right? She is. She's like in her forties. She's like started two companies. Like she just like gets the job fucking done. This is a woman that like, when we speak to her and just, you know, I've had you know, I, the first call we ever did was like three hours or two hours long. We talked to her a lot. It's like, this is a woman with some really healthy self-esteem. And she's like, I know that I want to be submissive. Like I want a hundred percent be submissive. And so it's like submission and dominance can absolutely be good for your self-esteem. Like, of course. And that's what we sort of bring it all back to. That's kind of our, a, a lot of people get lost in like, what's the correct dynamic that I should be doing? Should I be submissive? Should I be dominant? Like there is no correct but a guideline that has sort of helped us and that we put across in our content is after the experience, do I feel like I was better off for having that, had that experience? And do I feel like the other person or the other people were better off for having had that experience? Do we both feel like we're better off for that experience? Are we glad it happened? Do we feel like we've slightly boosted our self-esteem or our experience level of happiness, any of those kind of things? 
And so you can kind of just bring it back to that philosophy. And so there's no like correct way of doing something like submission is bad, dominance is good, or like there's no good or bad. It's just, am I happier afterwards? And are they happier afterwards? Mm. And in your case, we found when you were being a little bit, when you were being very submissive outside the bedroom, it wasn't necessarily helping you with the goals that you had of being an independent human being. Mm. And so, yeah, always bring it back to that. And so then the second type of, you know, category as we're going to look at here is outside of the bedroom, kink and BDSM. So that might take the form of a 24 seven power exchange where one of you is always the dom or the other one's the sub or whatever labels or words or dynamics you want to use. But basically you're doing BDSM and kink and referring to each other, you know, under those sort of categories outside of the bedroom. So it can be all the time or it can be some of the time. And this isn't necessarily something that we do a lot. We, we've played around with it, little bits and pieces. And as we already mentioned, it was at the start of our relationship when it was more sexual. Sure. Yeah, I think yeah. when we were seeing one another casually, but the basis of why we were seeing one another was sex, mm. it felt easier to bring it outside of the bedroom because mm. we knew each other sexually and that was the main way that we knew each other. But I think as we became more committed and actually got into a proper relationship. Yeah. We found it worked best for us that we kept more of that dynamic where you being dominant, me being submissive was exclusively or predominantly for the bedroom. And then outside of that, where we're equal parties, I guess. Yeah. And we do this with girls that we date as well. We like, we might muck around a little bit and play around a little bit with like labels. Like we might be in public and I might say like, call me sir, call me daddy. Like, but that's even then just like a fun little thing we do. For the most part, we keep the kink and the BDSM and the labels, I guess, or the power exchanges, if you want to call it that. We keep that stuff sort of more for in the bedroom. And so this category, so that's what we do. But if you're someone that wants to explore that stuff outside the bedroom, a way that this is often phrased is like, oh, I want kink to be, or BDSM, BDSM or kink to be a lifestyle. That's mm -hmm. how people usually refer to it. You know, like I'm going to live the BDSM lifestyle or I'm going to live the kink lifestyle. So yeah. like Fifty Shades of Grey did. Yeah. Or I'm in the community, like I'm in the yeah. BDSM community. And it's very much like the, the people that I might be friends with are also like doing BDSM and have these titles and they're either dominant or submissive. And that's very much like part of who they are. And to be clear, maybe this is something that we've, we've talked about this, but maybe this isn't clear. BDSM and kink aren't only about being dom and submissive. Like that's just like one aspect, mm -hmm. like to be very clear, there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's BDSM. You can both be equal partners, which I would say we are a hell of a lot of the time. Like you're literally just a guy and a girl or a guy and a guy or a girl and a girl or a guy. Fuck man. Like who? You're, you're two entities, you're two collections of molecules or more than two collections of molecules coming together, having a great time. There you go. I've covered all bases. Great. <laughs> <laughs> but like you might be a pair or a few people that come together and you're sort of like on equal footing. Like there is no power exchange. You don't give a shit about that. Like, like a lot of people who are into kink and BDSM and all of that, they don't really care about the power exchange. They just want to try some blindfolds. You know, it might be like a husband and a wife or whatever. And they say, hey, let's try something kinky. Like, and we've done that plenty of times. So it doesn't just have to be the dom sub stuff. But, you know, if you're into this lifestyle where you want to try it outside the bedroom a little bit or a lot, there are varying different levels of almost like intensity. I guess you'd say like how deep you can go with it, how much you can like go all in or just mm. play around with it a little bit. Mm. And do whatever you want. Like there's no correct answer here. Yeah. And you can always retract what you yeah. have said. Like you don't have to like, I've said I want to do this and now I have to stick with it even if you're not like, just try it. Yeah. I think a lot of people with kink and BDSM and, and, you know, even just having sex in general, like put a lot of pressure on themselves that they have to make a decision. You have to come up with a label. You have to know what you're going to do. And God damn, people put pressure on themselves. I usually see this men putting the most pressure on themselves, but I think that's just because I, most of my clients are men, but putting pressure on themselves that they have to be a good dom. They have to do a good job. You have to be an expert with BDSM. And to be fair, lots of women do that too. Women that I've coached and women that we've dated and slept with and been friends with. Yeah. They put pressure on themselves too. I have to be a good submissive. I have to know what I'm going to do. I have to never fuck anything up. It's like, no, you don't have to like commit to a certain label. You don't have to be good at any of this stuff. You can just try some stuff and play around. Like mm. I know it can be, or we know it can be scary and intimidating. 
it can like there's this big wide world of things and there's safety to think about and consent and what if I try something and I don't enjoy it then you try something and you don't enjoy it and you go hey I don't like that I won't do it anymore can we please stop and try something else there's nothing bad that happens because you didn't like a particular type of dynamic so give yourself you know any of you that are new to our channel a philosophy that we have all the time is give yourself permission to suck like it's okay if you suck at the start it's okay if you're not a great dom it's okay if you're not a great sub or you're not great with blindfolds or whatever you're trying we're just experimenting yeah and i guess expanding upon the idea of like varying levels of extremities mm. i i'm gonna go to one extreme so i remember watching this documentary years ago when i was i think maybe in my teens and probably on youtube like looking into this sort of stuff and and seeing what it's actually like, and I remember stumbling across this documentary of this dominatrix mm -hmm. and she had like a full-time slave mm -hmm. and she controlled every aspect of mm -hmm. his life. Yep. And this is the most extreme example. And so like he, she controlled his money, his mm -hmm. like internet usage. He like, she told him what to wear, like when he could go out and meet friends or he had a very set schedule for work. And mm -hmm. then at night, like he slept in a cage. Mm -hmm. Like, so he like, he had fully relinquished control to this woman and it was like a 24 7 thing she had like she fully dictated his life and they both liked that exchange like clearly that was and they felt like that was good for them and that's the most extreme end that i can probably i have a more extreme story than that but that's like that's a very extreme example and obviously something that extends outside of the bedroom doesn't have to be to that extremity maybe that's just like doing domestic chores around the house that's a good one yeah in a yeah. submissive way and obviously that's not even necessarily sexual but it's an act of subservience that might feel good for both parties and that can have that kind of kink power play exchange one thing that you said that i really liked is you said you can do things like you know the person can control your finances or they can you know, maybe do some chores or some fun little games. You know, you can give people sex homework. That's something that you and I have done. So I guess we have done little bits and pieces outside the bedroom. Mm -hmm. One thing that I like to do with you sometimes, and definitely with some of the girls that we date, is I'll just give them like sex homework. And they love that. You love that. Like, it's a fun little game. It's like, all right, you know, I, I pretend that I'm like their teacher or their professor or something. And I'm like, all right, young lady, like, you know, you need to do some homework and they go, oh, what's the homework? And it's like, well, you know, this week, maybe I need you to take a photo of yourself naked every morning when you wake up and tell me what you want me to do or you want us to do to you when you come over next. Mm -hmm. And that's like a fun little homework task. And they do that and they feel very naughty and it's very fun. And it's a nice little exchange between both of you. And so you can do like sex homework. You can do tasks. Some of that can be sexual. Like sex homework is obviously sexual, yeah. but it might be other things like, you know, clean my apartment that was something that you did for me a few times in the early days mm. now it's not sexual and i just clean up but <laughs> yeah and i appreciate every time you do that like that's kind of the point that we're making here mm. is like there's no hard and fast rules you don't even have to know what you want to do with this stuff you can just try things so you could literally say to your partner or partners you guys could sit down and say hey you know do you want to try some kink stuff or some sex stuff or some bdsm stuff like outside the bedroom and if they go like hell yeah i'm down like what do you want to try and you go oh i don't know um <laughs> do you want to try calling me sir outside the bedroom and see how that feels yeah i'm down to try that let's try that and you just kind of it's like you said before you're putting on a hat and you're trying it on for size you're just seeing if it fits you're seeing if you like it it's okay if it's awkward at the start if you're a bit clumsy with it we've said many times before people often put pressure on themselves that they have to step into character and remain in character and do a great job and like mm -hmm. i'm going to be a a perfect dom or a perfect submissive and i can never step outside that you can step outside that any moment you want you can go hey i feel kind of silly doing this do you feel silly and you'll find half the time the other person goes yeah maybe a little bit okay <laughs> well do we want to keep trying it until it feels natural do we want to try something else like so there's no rules with this even if you're doing something hardcore mm -hmm. like a 24 7 slave dom relationship mm. there are moments you can break the fourth wall and go hey are you still having fun and i recommend that we recommend that like yeah. check in with your partner and see are you having fun is this good do you want to try something else but i would assume that 99 percent of people that do bdsm break the fourth like you're not in that space i think there's very few people that stay in the space a hundred percent of the time yeah absolutely yeah. like if you're a dom if you get sick <laughs> 
Mm. You're not you're not going to be in like big Good strong yep. like Good dominant call. mode and I'm taking you're like I'm sick. I want to have a lie down. I want to be looked after. I I know like. you're the submissive, but can you just give me a cuddle? I feel sick. <laughs> like I got a sniffly nose. Can you just like kiss me on the forehead and tell me that I'm a beautiful boy and I'm going to heal up and I'm going to be okay? <laughs> yeah. It's inevitable that like life stuff is going to come up and you probably have to step outside that for a second and just like mm. do normal boring non-kinky adult life things. Yeah, and so I hope everybody can see that, the, like most things in kink and BDSM and sex and how life in general, people often like to make it black or white. And now the reason that we do that, you know, like people say, I'm on the left, I'm on the right. I like this politician. I like that politician. I like this sports team. Not that other sport is good. The reason that we do that is not because we like to fight and argue. No, it's it's because the way brain the brain works is if we're able to categorize something as like good versus bad, good versus evil black versus white. Like if we can categorize it, it's a lot simpler. Mm -hmm. And so we as humans like to stick labels on things. We like to make it black or white. It's just more efficient. Like that's why we do it. But I've just found in my own life and in my own experience, and I, I think you've found the same, I know you've found the same thing. Life is often a lot more gray. It's more of a spectrum rather than like it's this or that. And so when we're talking about these two different maybe categories or ideas around dynamics of like, you know, keep the kink and the BDSM either in the bedroom only or sometimes outside the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Like when we're talking about those two, realize that's like a big fucking spectrum. There's so much wiggle room there for you figuring out whatever it is that you and your partner or partners want. Like, there's no correct answer. And so we're kind of just playing around with these concepts, seeing what's fun, seeing what we like, seeing what we don't. And the BDSM community and the kink community are very loving communities, I'll say that. But there is so much back and forwards about like, well, this is correct. This is wrong. You're doing this wrong. You're doing this bad. And on this video, I'm going to predict the future. And I can't <laughs> predict the future, but I'm not going to be surprised if somebody writes a comment saying, hey, at minute like 10, at 10 minutes and 43 seconds, you said this. That's actually the wrong. You really shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be telling people to do that. That's so wrong. When I fill this entire video with me saying 50 times, hey, do whatever you want. And if you want to do something and you think that's the right way, I love that. I support that. That's beautiful. I will still get people telling me, and I do because I've on the previous BDSM videos we've done, the set, you'll get that, the, you know, those two or three people that go, this is wrong. This is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. I think that's just because with BDSM, it's something that people are very passionate about and very excited about mm. and so i see it as a an expression of like i'm so excited about this idea and this is what's worked for me and so i just want to go out and spread that and tell as many people that this is the correct way of doing it mm. i think it's just sort of a, a misunderstanding of just because something works really well for me and is perfect for me it must be the correct way of doing it and i should tell other people but mm. i again see that as like excitement i see that you know they're loving what they do and they want to share that but yeah. If you do come into a BDSM community or a kink community and you do feel like a little bit of people telling you this is the correct way, this is wrong, this is right, you're bad if you do this, mm -hmm. that's stupid, you shouldn't do that, you know, maybe step back a little bit and go, okay, like, what do I want to do? What does my partner or partners want to do? As long as we're both having fun and no one's getting hurt and everyone's, you know, feeling better about themselves afterwards, you know, that's between me and them. Like, that's our personal private business. Let's give a few little suggestions on because we're still in the sphere of like outside of the bedroom, mm. like kink and BDSM outside the bedroom, which again is something we do a little bit, not a ton, but a little bit. Let's give some some um, some different suggestions. You said you can sort of, con would we use the word control? If the word control resonates with you guys listening, you guys and girls listening, then great. If Be not, able to dictate financial decisions for your yeah, partner. Use whatever fucking words mm. you want. Like <laughs> controlling your partner's spending is a big one. Mm. A lot of people do that in BDSM. I've had quite a few coaching clients who could get into that stuff or have played around with somebody else controlling their spending, mm -hmm. or it's even, it's not even control, maybe managing. And so you see how even with the words you use, there's flexibility. Someone could have control over your money. So they always tell you what, like you have to literally listen to what they say, mm -hmm. or someone could manage your money. And so they guide you and mentor you. Mm -hmm. And even in the relationships that we have and the type of dynamic that we have, I, when I step into the dominant role, I'm more like a mentor 
dominant. I'm guiding. I'm trying to encourage because I'm a coach. I'm like a mentor in general. I like helping people. And so even stepping into a dom role, there's just so much like wiggle room and submissive as well. It's like you could be a submissive who wants to just be like 100% controlled. Mm. Or you could be a submissive who's like, hey, I just want to ask you for some advice. Can you just guide me a little bit? Like I, I value you and I, I trust your opinion. You're older than me or I respect you or whatever. Mm. Can you just like gently guide me in the right direction? Yeah. If anything, the way that I see it is also almost it is almost like your natural personality traits mm. are mm. kind of coming mm. out. And that's I think when you're intensifying the dynamics and connecting with other people, those parts of yourself that are already there come out during King Corpidia Sam or sex or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Or, and even that has wiggle room because yeah, your natural personality traits can kind of be like amplified by BDSM or kink, but then there are so many people that like, okay, my natural personality traits are like this, but when I try BDSM and kink, I want to do the opposite. I want to step into like the exact opposite mm -hmm. role. Like I have dated, I don't know if you and I have ever dated a woman like this together. Maybe we have, but I have dated women on my own, like before I met you that were like, hardcore like bad bitches so to speak and when i say bad bitches i love that phrase it but it means like a woman who just has her shit together like she's just she's a fucking dominant woman like maybe at work or whatever sure. i've dated a few women that are like dominant as hell in the workplace and that's like their personality trait like outside like the bedroom just in general and then when they come into the bedroom they're like i am dominant all the damn time mm. I just need you to tie me up and I need to be your good little girl. Like I just, these are like, you know, 30 something year old women who are just like, I just want to, I'm, I want to take a break from who I am. The woman that I'm coaching in the program right now, yeah. I wouldn't say, no, no, no. To be clear, she's submissive outside the bedroom too. But like a lot of people might look at her and go like, Jesus woman, like you've started two companies. You have all this money. You're like a mother of four kids. Like you're a, you got your shit together. And then mm -hmm. she goes in the bedroom. I want to step into like a very submissive role. I mean, I feel like that's the cliche too. It's like the, the businessman that's bossing around people all day. And then he like pays some dominatrix to, to just like, whip him him and, like and yeah. call him like a little bitch. And like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the comical cliche. Yeah. But like, if that's your thing, more power to you. Hell yeah. As long as you're both <laughs> having fun. Fuck yeah. Other things you can try outside the bedroom, controlling or managing or guiding daily routine. Mm-hmm. And I could see a lot of people stepping into that. You could step into it in a controlling way. Mm. Like, here's your calendar. Here's when you're going to go see your friends. Like you said, with the very extreme example. And when we say extreme, we don't mean extreme in a bad way, but it is like a very, it's very full on. intense. Intense, yeah. yeah. Full on, committed, all in, 100% all in. <laughs> um, but you could also do that in a guiding way. Like you could be like, all right, listen. And this is kind of what you and I did at the start of our relationship, where I said, mm. okay, like you want to be submissive. You would like me to guide you. I'm not really controlling. I'm just not a super controlling person, but like, I will tell you what to do, but in a guiding way. Mm. And one of the, th one of the first things you said to me is I really want to lose weight. And I was like, okay, then I'm going to guide you on this thing. I'm going to tell you what to do. You know, you're going to trust me. We're going to push you in this direction. Yeah. And I could see this dynamic and maybe this is like definitely something I've read in erotica before, but like that story of the guy or girl who's like a little bit misguided, who has maybe had a bit of a, like a rough youth. She's kind of like lost. Yeah. And then they're like, you know, you get into trouble with the law, but then you find the dominant and they kind of like get your life in check. Set and you on the straight and narrow. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, you won't be doing that anymore. And we're going to set your life up better. And they're gonna you and I <laughs> definitely did that at the start. Like you were going to university and you really fucking didn't want to. And so I had an intervention because I asked you multiple times, like, what do you want to do? Oh, I guess I have to go to university to please my daddy, but I really don't want to. And I hate this. And like, so I had an intervention with you with one of my friends and we sat down and said like, what do you fucking want to do? And you're like, I don't want to go to uni, but I have to. And we're like, no, you're not going to fucking university. If you don't want to do this, you don't fucking like, yeah. The point is you can be controlling somebody's life or you can be gently guiding them and pushing them. So that's another thing you can play around with. Mm -hmm choosing clothing we i mean we fucking do that technically we don't really do it much anymore okay we did that for a long time yeah and then eventually i think this is kind of what we were talking about earlier where i think i needed my own sense of independence 100 percent. yeah sometimes i really didn't like the clothing that you chose out for me yeah but i went along with it and i kind of felt a bit weird about it and mm -hmm. so now we're kind of at a point where i will sometimes when we see one another dress up for you a little bit different to how i might choose when i don't see you yeah but that's, that feels more like my choice now. Yeah. And I dictate that versus you telling me you're going to dress like this. And me yeah. me asking you to tell me, but. Yeah, to you, be clear, you wanted it. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. yeah. 
And I think with all of these things too, like it's, you could almost remove all of these, I guess, ideas or suggestions that we're giving from King and BDSM and just have them be like relationshipy mentoring things, or yeah. it can have the, the kink BDSM dominant submission undertones. Like it's, I think about the way that you're playing that out or. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be BDSM or kink. You don't have mm-hmm. to put that label on it. It doesn't have to be sexual. Plenty of partners in relationships go like, Hey, can you, I mean, God, like, let's talk about the stereotype one, stereotypical one is a woman saying to her man, you know, women tend to be more submissive and men tend to be more of the leaders. A woman just saying to her man, oh, I can't pick. Can you just like pick something for me from this restaurant menu? Mm. Like there you go. That's like a power dynamic, but it's not really, it's more just. And so you see how this doesn't have to, like we said, just be kink and, and sex and BDSM. Mm. It can just be like part of the fucking relationship. Mm. And you can switch in and out of those roles. You know, like one minute she might say, oh, fuck, can you just tell me what to order? You've said that to me. You, how many times have you like said to me? Decisions, actually. I often... remember the other night you were trying to decide between two dresses and you're like, can you just pick for me? And I was like, that one. And you're like, okay, thank you. God, thank you. I've been thinking about this for a week. <laughs> thank you for picking for me. And yeah. then you might slip back into like, hey, now I'm in control. Like, And there are times where you, I wouldn't say you ever like tell me what to do, but you suggest stuff to me all the damn time like all the time. And so you can kind of slip in and out of these roles. Another thing you can experiment in outside the bedroom. Mm. This is one you like to do. Chastity or permission for orgasms. Yeah. Like, can I, am I allowed to have an orgasm? Can I come? Mm. And we do that obviously in the bedroom and outside the bedroom. Yeah. It's very rare that I will have an orgasm without you being there. Yeah. Okay. So I I guess now that we talk about this, (laughs) we do do some of this stuff outside the bedroom. I guess and this is the point that we made earlier. We just don't really label it as like a BDSM mm. or kink relationship. And, uh, and there are so many partners that would be doing shit like this. They, they've never heard the word BDSM or kink. They're just trying this sort of stuff. Yeah. But I, I guess the point that we're making is that I would never label myself as a submissive. Like mm. that's not a title that's... That resonates with you. No. Yeah. Now that we think about it, you ask for permission to orgasm 100% of the time mm. with me. Mm. And there's exceptions to that. Like, sure. But yeah, that, and that's something lots of girls that we date seem to like that. That seems to be a really common thing that a lot of women like. Like, I I want to be made to ask for permission every time I orgasm. And pretty, like, half the time they suggest that to us. We're pretty soft, though. Basically, always say yes. Yeah, I basically always like say yes. We like giving other people pleasure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's very rare that we'll, like, do the whole orgasm denial thing. And I do some, it sometimes. Some, I'll, I'll like... say no a few times, and then you're getting closer and closer to orgasm and keeping you on the edge. And you go, please, can I come? No, not yet. Oh, please, like, fuck. And, like, you know, we'll, I'll back off a little bit, and then I'll go again, and then back off, like, several yep. times. And then eventually I'll say, okay, now you're allowed to orgasm. But We're soft. I don't think there's any time I ever say no, like, for, like, a day or two, mm. where I'm just like, no, you don't get an orgasm at all. Mm. Like... <laughs> But you can play around with that, whatever you guys and girls want to do. Chastity, by the way, is you can do that physically. So you can buy what is called a chastity cage. Or a belt for women. Or a belt. Yeah, there's different ways. Like a physical thing that you would put on your genitalia to not let you orgasm or not let you touch it. You can still orgasm even though it's on, but like it makes it a lot harder. Or you could just say, no, you don't get to have sex. And so there are so many fun different ways that we have experimented with that. Um, like cuck queening, we've done that where you basically are made to, and I say made, but you want it really badly. It's your fantasy that we did for you. Mm. I I had fun with it too, where you're like made to watch Mm. and I will have sex with another girl and I will be speaking dirty to you. So will she, and we'll both be like, oh, you like that? You just have to sit there and watch like, Mm. and you're very horny and very turned on. That's like sort of like chastity because you're not getting to have sex. Yeah. And you can play around with that stuff. So, you know, you could experiment with that you could say to your partner hey we're gonna meet for the next week but you're not gonna have sex and they go like oh my god like please you know i I really want to and you're like no like we're just Mm -hmm. gonna go on some road trips and i might touch you and make you really horny and god like i'd really love to have sex with you but i think you're just gonna have to wait like you can play around with that kind of stuff like Mm -hmm. do whatever you want but there's such a wide world of experimentation here use of titles and names Mm, which we've already mentioned yeah just calling one another like master sir daddy yeah. mistress little one pet slave mm. slot whatever obviously works. a lot of those probably get dropped when you're in front of strangers you probably but-, <laughs> yeah. but even then like like we said before and maybe we can read out or we can think about talk about a couple of like 
interesting extreme examples we've seen of like people taking the BDSM or kink um, dynamic to like 100%, 24-7, because mm. I got a few examples of that. But you could literally say slave and slut in front of other people. I've read articles, I've seen articles like in the newspaper and shit of like what's called pet play, where somebody will pretend to be like a pony or a dog or something. And so they're on all fours and they're wearing like a little dog well, you can wear like a little yeah. dog mask. It's technically safe for work, which is why they're doing it in public. Like yeah. they're not naked, but like. Yeah, you're not naked. But like you literally act like a dog. And I've seen that in newspaper articles where they interview like this couple, like she or he walks around on all fours like a dog and they have to eat out of the dog bowl. And, you know, they literally act like a puppy. When they take them for a walk like a dog when they're out in public. So you can go to that level if you want to. We personally don't do that. Although I believe that is on your fantasy list. I don't, I think in, in practice. You think you couldn't play it out? Yeah. Like, I think, I don't think it's I like play a, it out. a cute fantasy that I can like get off to, but then in practice, yeah, I'm like, I'm not, it, I'm yeah. not going out on a dog leap. Like that's not happening. And even then, fuck, I mean, here we go. And this is what we talk about or what I keep bringing up where there's such a wide world, like BDSM and kink, a big reason why we like kink play and all of that is because there's just like infinite things you can try. Mm -hmm. And so you can, even with some of these things, you could even have no intention of ever actually doing these things. But like in the bedroom during sex, you can be talking about mm. and fantasizing yeah. about some of these things. So everything that we're talking about here where you're like, you could literally be in the middle of having sex with your partner. And if this is something that you're both into, you could be like, imagine if I controlled everything in your life and they could be like, oh my God, that's so fucking hot. Like, fuck me harder. And you're like, imagine if I didn't let you spend your money. Oh my God, that's so hot. Like, <laughs> you don't even have to actually do it. You can just like fantasize mm. about it. And we've had plenty of that shit where we're like, oh my God, imagine if I did this. And you're like, oh my God, that's so hot. And then it's like, but we've yeah. never done it. We're probably never going to yeah, do it. Yeah, and almost like post sex, you're lying in bed, and there's just like and you're that like, hey, we're not going to do quiet, that. By like, the way, yeah. by the way, that's not. Yeah, that's <laughs> never happening. You're like, cool. <laughs> yeah. Great. I don't care. It was hot in the moment, so. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to that, um, we already kind of talked about this, but if you're a submissive or you want to be in that position, you can kind of just give up like complete control, almost like a parent and a child relationship would. Like the child gives up complete fucking control to the parent when, when they're young. And they're not doing that willingly. But no, like, no actually, think I take resisting. that back. I think they are partly doing it willingly. If you say to a kid, good luck, kid, you're two years old. Mommy and daddy aren't going to look after you anymore. Fuck off into the real world. The kid's like, no, like, <laughs> please. I mean, animal, lots of animals do that too. Like plenty of them will run away. But plenty of them, if you like said dogs. to a dog, like, piss off, go live your own life, the dog is just like, but I love you. And you're like, no, you have to go away. <laughs> like, go figure out life yourself. And you're like, but I love you. Can I stay? I love you so much. Please, can I be your good boy? And you're like, okay, fine, you can stay. So <laughs> I think people, like, willingly, kids mm -hmm. and dogs and stuff like that do willingly step into that. Plenty of them don't, sure, but mm -hmm. yeah. Final thing I guess we can talk about. And there's a million different ideas of things you can do outside the bedroom and in. Like, I hope we've made that clear. But Yeah, this is just a few Yeah, ideas. to get you thinking, to get yeah. you started. So punishment mm. with rules. Which is not something that we actually... We don't do proper punishment. What the fuck are you talking about all the time? No. I have a giant smile on my face when I do it. <sighs> and it's a fun little game. But okay, like, I have... All the time. I I've... swear to God, like, every week punish you i have like an erotic version of that where it's like you oh, actually don't do that, like yeah. don't like you're actually being put over like your knee and you're getting spanked and it actually hurts and like maybe i'm actually quite upset like it's there's an we established really rule that, yeah. and it's yeah. been broken and then you get properly punished the point where it's like i'm not having fun but like this is part of the agreement that we're having yeah and so you could agree to that you could sort of, and i would be very clear that you both agree to that before you do that where it's like a proper punishment like i'm gonna spank you and maybe you're like oh my god like i'm really sorry like maybe you go through that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and that would be like if you had some rules that you followed like mm -hmm. you know every day you need to send me a nude picture of yourself and if that gets broken you're going to get punished mm -hmm. and when you're doing that stuff make sure you both really want to be doing that shit mm -hmm. like definitely that is something that i would be cautious about and i not cautious but like i'd be thinking of like let's make sure this is a fun awesome activity that we're both enjoying mm -hmm. right or that you're getting something positive out of it yeah make sure it's like a fun thing and so we kind of do punishment but I just have the most biggest smile on my face and I'm saying it almost like a joke. It's like when you're a little smart ass to me, cause I'm a smart ass all the time. I'm like constantly, I am a smart ass all the time. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm like a brat, yeah. even though I'm a fuck. We have a recording of you saying <laughs> that you're a brat. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm the king of like dad jokes. Ugh. I think dad jokes, like anyone, any dad who get, does dad jokes, that's like brat energy. Yeah. Like you're being a little smart ass, like dad jokes are being a little smart ass. But like in a dad form where you're mm. like, 
No one calls it a smart ass, but you are being a. So I'm a smart ass all the time. Mm. And so are you. I've picked up on that since being. You've probably with just you. learned it from me. Yes. 100%. You 100%. Have. Like I've trained you inadvertently to be a smart ass and to say dumb dad jokes and but to like. But then when I do actually act like a smart ass. Then now. I have to punish you because I'm, I'm the dad joke. I tell the dad jokes in the relationship. And if you tell a dad joke, hey, listen, that's my role, okay? And so then I will have like a little. And I have a giant fucking smile on my face when I say it. And I go, oh, somebody's earned themselves a little spanking, have they? You want to, and then you'll go like no, and they'll go oh, saying no, <laughs> saying no to the dom. Oh, looks like that's two spankings, and you'll go no, that's no spankings, and I'll go <laughs> now we're onto three spankings. You want to just keep sure. racking them up, and you're like yep, sure, let's go to a hundred spankings, <laughs> and I'm like okay, smart ass, then we'll go to a hundred spankings. Do you want to keep going? And you're like let's do it, let's keep, and so like it's a fun little game, and then half the time I will actually, I believe you are owed five spanks at the moment. Correct? No, I'm not okay, agreeing. Okay, six now, six. <laughs> But so or you tickle me. I, don't like I will tickles. tickle you. Yeah, tickling tickles. is like my punishment like too. And so this can be a very fun, silly, dumb little game that you guys play mm. as part of your relationship. Or you can make it serious. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, there's a million other things you can do outside the a bedroom when it comes to like controlling or managing or running or whatever words you want to use. Yeah. And just BDSM and sex in general. Like you can absolutely do that outside the bedroom. Yeah, and do whatever's I th fun. think ultimately with this whole podcast, it's been pretty free flowing. Mm -hmm. And the point I think we've already said is just to get you thinking about what you might like, what you might mm -hmm. want to try mm -hmm. a bit about what we do, what works for us and other options that aren't what we do. Yeah. And you put this in, I feel like this kind of goes without saying, but like, make sure you're both having fun with this stuff. And if, if you're ever not having fun, Hey, that's cool. Like you've learned mm -hmm. something that you don't like. You can just speak up in the moment. If you struggle to speak up in the moment, hey, that's cool too. Like, just talk about it afterwards. Mm -hmm. I've had plenty of coaching clients that I've worked with and even some of the girls that we've seen that it's not until after the event. Like, they go home the next day, they're like, oh, man, I kind of wish I hadn't done that. So you just text the other person and say, hey, look, I kind of wish I hadn't done that. Um, do you mind if next time we either try it a little different, we try something else, we just mm -hmm. don't do that and we try something, like, completely different? Yeah, cool. Hey, sweet, we've learned something. Mm -hmm. Like... This can be a very big process of sort of experimentation and with a lot of boundaries, particularly, you might not know something's a boundary till you try it and you mm -hmm. go, oh shit, that's a boundary. I don't want to do that. Cool. Great. Awesome. You fucking learn something. Mm -hmm. So be on the same team or have the mindset of like, it's me and my partner or partners on the same team. Like we have the same mission. We want to have fun. We want to learn. We want to grow. We want to connect. You know, I say all the time, all human beings want the same thing. We want to be loved. We want to be understood and we want to be happy. And those are kind of like universal human traits. But I guess let's cover the final chapter. Mm. Finding the right dynamic for you. You can do a BDSM test. And so this is the test we are talking about. You can just go to BDSMtest.org and just like start the test. And it spits out this nice little graph. And here's just a random example of a results page that I found on the internet. So it'll basically spit out a lot of different, you can see the words like I'm an owner or I'm a brat team. And it gives you kind of a percentage, which is a way of thinking like, which things would I enjoy? So the things that it puts at the top of the list, you know, all these things here are some things that you might be interested in trying. And so this is a really good test if you have no idea what you might enjoy when it comes to kink or sex or BDSM. And then down the very bottom, obviously it has things of like 0%. So this human being, whoever they are, 0% voyeur. So that means an exhibitionism. Probably someone that wants to keep sex like literally just to themselves and their partner or partners. They mm -hmm. don't want anyone to watch or any of that kind of stuff. So yeah, this gives you a nice little example of like what you might actually enjoy when it comes to the bedroom. You can also, you mentioned this, you can read literature. Mm. You could watch some porn. I'm someone that's trying to reduce my porn use. And if you're similar to that, you know, you don't have to do that. But Literature can be a decent way. They just go Google, like, what are other people into? Yeah. What do people like? And as we already mentioned, like, things in, like, as a fantasy can be fantastic. Mm. And in practice, you're like, nah, no, thank you. Didn't enjoy that. Yeah. But it, it's a nice way to get you thinking and, yeah. and fantasizing. And if it turns you on, it's, it's probably worth giving it a shot. Yeah. You can also attend events. So you can go to fetlife.com, which is a fetish website. It's kind of like Facebook, but for kink and stuff like mm. that. So you can go to events and events. There's lots of different types of events. We went to a sex event, like a, an 
what would you call it? Like convention. an ex- a convention. Yeah, we went to a sex convention. So that's in the next point. Yeah, so that that's sort of fun. You can just go and meet other people who are into this stuff and just have a coffee, casual chat and be like, so like, what stuff do you try? Uh, How do I get into this stuff? Like, that's a good way to figure out. You can even, and I've had plenty of coaching clients that go to these kind of events. And again, like there can be sex there or there cannot be sex there. And my clients have done like a mix of both, honestly, but you can just go to one of these events and you can just go up to someone and say, look, I'm completely new. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what I would even like or enjoy. Where do I start? And people go, okay, well, like here, I'll tell you a few things I'm into. And you can say like, would that be fun? Would that not be fun? Mm -hmm. And then just go ask like five other people what they like. And that'll kind of get you thinking. That's kind of a nice way to get into this stuff. Mm -hmm. You can also write what I call a sexual bucket list, like a list of all the sex things that you might want to try in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then you can ask your partner or partners, like, what is your bucket list? And when people write their own bucket list, you'll look at it and go, oh my God, I never would have even thought of any of that stuff. This turns you on. Wow. Why does it turn you on? Actually, now that I think about it, holy shit, that maybe that would be fun. You can kind of get inspiration and ideas. And I have been writing my own sexual bucket list for the last, like, I don't know, like eight years. So you can keep adding to it and tweaking it over time. You've done yours as well. Yeah. And we add bits that we hear from other women and stuff like that. But really, it's just trying a few different things. Seeing what you're into. into. Anything else you would love to tell these lovely human beings, these beautiful, wonderful, sexy, sexual, lovely humans? Have fun and explore. Yeah. And again, to really underline here, I don't think there's any right answers with any of this stuff. It's just, what do you like? What are your partners like? And go from there. If you found this video helpful, we offer coaching. I will leave a link in the description to the coaching. I would love it if you signed up for the coaching program. We have a really good coaching program. We change a lot of people's lives. Like I said, men and women, everybody's welcome. Whatever your goals are, whether they're sex, dating, relationships, money, we have plenty of people joining for to find like peace and love and happiness and work on being okay in the moment and loving themselves. We're a very hippie, free love community and channel here very sexual channel too, I guess, but I think those things go nicely together. Yeah. You don't recycle them. I don't recycle. No. Are you allowed allowed to be a hippie if you don't recycle? Leave a comment below. Am I a bad hippie because I don't really recycle? Love you all very much. Hope this was helpful. Go out there and try some kink or don't if you don't want to. Coaching link in the description below. As always, go out there and work on those goals and crush those goals. If you've been wanting an amazing, awesome elite sex life, tons of threesomes, plenty of wild adventures and great memories with awesome people, we would love to help you get there. Here's just a little bit of what our coaching clients have achieved in their time in the program. Renee had a threesome in just his second week of coaching, had a woman write him a love letter, and he went on to have sex with 12 women in just 12 weeks of coaching. Corky had his first threesome, slept with seven amazing women, and made a ton of awesome memories with them. George and Powell both had sex with 10 women each in their 12 weeks, had a bunch of wild adventures along the way. Join me and join them by clicking the coaching link in the description below.